In this lecture, we will discuss how to export the probability data into the voltage source using PWL files and the scale factor in PWL. We will go over two examples that use the data from Gaussian distribution as a voltage source using PWL file functions, and also we will show you how to use the scale factor in PWL. Here is the first example. As shown in the slides, we will use the same schematic as shown before in the previous lectures. The objective is to record and play back the data generated by the probability distribution. We use the same data created by the Gaussian distribution in the time domain transient simulation. In other words, we run the DC operating point simulation for 100 times and we save the data and we generate the same voltage using PWL files in time domain. To export the data, we go to the plot window, right click, choose file, and then we choose export data as text. We select voltage or Gaussian and hit OK. And then we can open the text file in Windows Notepad. Notice that there are two columns. The first column is iteration index x changing from 1 to 100. The second column is voltage of Gaussian. This is a voltage created by Gaussian distribution at each run. We call it time and the data pairs. We delete the first row which is the header and we save it as this so we keep the time and data pairs. Again the first column is 1 to 100, that's the data sequence number. The second one is voltage. Here we create a new schematic. We add a voltage source V1. We add a transient simulation for 100 seconds. We right click over the voltage V1 and choose PWL file. We browse and use the file we just created. I just want to emphasize that the first column is time and the second column is used as value. Note that the two dimensional data by time and value can be saved as a text file and put this text file into a PWL file. So now we want to repeat the same data in time domain. So here is a transient simulation we output the Gaussian distribution data in tra transient simulation from 0 to 100 seconds represents the data we have. So one thing we want to emphasize that is linear interpolation is used to estimate the new data between two known data points. Again, this simulation is 100 seconds because for the first column we have data from 1 second to 100 seconds which was created by the time sequence from 1 to 100. Just for illustration purposes only, we add the RC filter after the voltage V1. So this is a pretty large time constant. Uh, you can see the input data is in green. We got a pretty sharp change of voltage. After the RC filter, the sharp spikes become rounded and uh, and we got the low pass filtered output voltage. Here is the second example. We use the same PWL file but we add scale factors here, which is a very convenient syntax. In this case, we add time scale factor as 0.5 and value scale factor as 10. That means the time is shrinked from 100 seconds to 50 seconds and the value is increased by 10 times. We put the PWL syntax here and we call the same file name. Discussion. After time equals to 50 seconds, because there is no data available, the output voltage remains at its last value, which is 
295 volt times the scale factor 10 equals to 72.95 volt from 50 seconds to 100 seconds. The output voltage at RC filter is different from the last example because the input voltage frequency signature is changed. Just to recap, in this lecture we show you how to save probability distribution data as a text file and we use a voltage PWL file to feed data into the voltage source. And we use PWL file with time and value scale factors. By doing this, we can shrink or stretch the data points in both X and Y dimensions. Here are the references for this lecture. Thank you very much. See you next time.